What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm actually cleaning up the man cave down here, getting ready for our Super Bowl party tomorrow, and hope you guys will join us. You know, um, we are hurting Cowboys Nation. We are disgusted at where we are. To me, this, you know, they always say that a person can't get help until they hit rock bottom, you know, be it, you know, a person with addictions and things. You literally have to be at rock bottom to affect change. Now, what the Cowboys, I hope, are doing, A, that they really care about winning, that if Jerry Jones is all in, that he is ready to affect change because the change is only going to come with Jerry Jones. D-Law pointed out a big problem. I know, listen, there's a multitude of problems. We could not stop the run, and you're not going to as long as you sit here and believe that we can just take a, a safety and make him a linebacker. This is no different from what we used to look at and say, Tyron Crawford, he can play edge or he can play tackle. You know, when you need a defensive tackle, you need a defensive tackle. You don't need to have a lightweight guy to play tackle. It's not to say that he can't from time to time, but if you're relying on guys that are not the type of players that you need, then that's a problem. The problem was, again, and this is a problem that goes all around, with Tony Pollard trying to make him a between-the-tackles running back that could carry the load as a workhorse, and he's not that kind of guy. These are problems that Jerry Jones makes that the team can only do so much to disguise him or work around him. But when you heard D-Law saying that they were tired, that they were tired, and um, that reminded me of back in 2020, when we heard that, you know, him basically say we were soft because we were getting beat up. And so it also brought me back around to the whole thing of, you know, being tired. This is no different than what Mike McCarthy said after we lost to San Francisco in the playoffs three years ago. I want to take you back. Now, I can't find the Mike McCarthy press conference, but I did find it up on Get Up where they're discussing it. And let's listen to that this morning, or actually, excuse me, early, depending on where you are. It's actually afternoon here now. Cowboys, you don't get to take the word back. That's just not the way the game works here, right, Nico? If anyone <laughs> no, knows that, no, you I, do. Yeah, of course. Uh, it, they're bringing up things you didn't say. <laughs> That's just the way of the world, so, I guess. So what do you think of the coach saying, I thought uh, we were, I felt uh, it in the locker room during the team prayer. We were nervous to start the game. Well, it's up to the coach to make the team feel prepared to not have nervous energy and not be nervous. The only time I'm nervous, or if I'm walking into a test or an exam, a final exam, and I'm nervous, I'm scared, I didn't prepare. I didn't study. I'm mm -hmm. not ready to go. Right. So it's up to the head coach to make the team feel like we're prepared. We've 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 done everything possible to go into this matchup and go out here and play our best. When you're nervous, that means you have questions in your mind on if you can actually get the job done. He actually went on to say, and you heard it right there, they were cleaner than us at the start of the game. Yeah. And it, it connected that back to the nerves or the angst, yeah. which suggests that the 49ers were ready to play psychologically and the Cowboys, is he we're saying not. we're not? I, I, I'm flabbergasted. They were not. Uh, Sacho, what is your reaction? Well, I, I, I don't know if y'all saw the video uh, of the San Francisco 49ers before yes. the game with Debo Samuel, Trent Williams, and the boom box and the entire team walking out of the tunnel to the locker room. The San Francisco 49ers were not nervous and they had no reason to be. A lot of people said, and they were right, they were one of the hottest teams coming into the playoffs. Dallas Cowboys knew that, so they should have been nervous. And so I don't think he should take anything back. I think Mike McCarthy was right. The Cowboys were nervous. They played like it, and that's what we saw. He called a spade a spade, and Dallas Cowboys – we're a nervous spade. <laughs> well, Dan, you are you are one who you know could be sitting there they were reporting on what it is the coach just said. What, what I'm looking at your face. What is your reaction to that? We've had this conversation about Mike McCarthy all year, right? You don't call the offense, you don't call the defense. <laughs> 
what do you do <laughs> if you're not preparing the team to win? The, I mean, like, that, uh, that's your yes. entire job is to set the tone. And so even if it's true, and, and God knows we don't get enough truth in these news conferences, so, so we're thankful for him at least being honest, but that does not put him in a real good place vis-a-vis -vis the criticism he is receiving for the job he did as their coach this year to say, hey, we weren't ready to, start, <laughs> we weren't ready to play at the start of that game. Hey, hey buddy, that's on you. That's right. You know, Nico, I think that the, the analogy you used is a good one. You know when you're not nervous walking into a test? When you know the answers. Exactly. When you know the answers to the test, you're not nervous. When you know what's expected of you, you're not nervous. When there is uncertainty of any sort, that is when you become anxious. And it, it, it suggests that there was a level of uncertainty for that team going in. I, I, he, is, is this directly from the Joe Judge School of Media <laughs> Management? Like, you, you you've got the job and then you talk your way out of it? I don't know what's going he on. He probably should have said we had butterflies or something. Yeah. Because you always have that energy inside of you to like go play the game, but right. to be actually nervous, that's a different thing. Yes, I look, mean, and I'm not suggesting, look, I'm sure he didn't mean it the way it comes out, but part of that, your job there is the messaging. So once you put that out there, it doesn't go back. I mean, at the very least, say, you know, they were cleaner than us at the start of the game, that's on me, right? I mean, I didn't, unless we cut that part out, I didn't hear that. No. So no. they, they, he yeah. felt it Greedy. during the team prayer. Yeah, go ahead, Sacho. Yeah, it's on the team chat. <laughs> I, I, I don't think he. I don't think he misspoke whatsoever. I think the yeah. team was nervous. We don't need to talk ourselves out and try to overcomplicate what Mike McCarthy said. They were nervous, and that it is what it is. And they should have been nervous. Yes, they. No, they shouldn't have been. Yes, they finally got all their receivers back. Yes, uh, they, they thought they were going to win. At least a lot of people did. But San Francisco was peaking at the right time. And Nico knows this. I knows this. Anybody who's played football or watched football knows this. Sometimes it's about peaking at the right time. And San Fran was. So da the Dallas Cowboys should, in fact, have been nervous. And Mike McCarthy saw that. And he called it what it was. He needs to well, be better, absolutely. That. But we don't need to sit here and say that they weren't nervous. So let's take that for, for let's take it then at face value. I'm sure there are a lot of fans out there watching this who are saying, "Well, you're going out to play a really big game. Of course you're nervous. You it's played a, more yes. big games than yes. anybody I know." Are you? Okay, we can leave that there. Um, so, in two of the three playoff games, after the fact, we got the coach saying they were nervous to start the game. We got now a player saying we were tired. So where does this all fall on? Is this Jerry Jones who's hamstrung Mike McCarthy? Where these guys, these kids are, you know, his buddies? Or is this Mike McCarthy is allowing them to be soft? Shout out to Law Nation because Law Nation is getting all the good stuff. He got Michael Irvin. And Emmett Smith, two guys that are really just disgusted with the Cowboys, talking about what it was like when they lost the game. And I pointed out to you guys that um, they say Charles Haley went after Steve Young. And see, what I will say is we didn't win a lot of JMU when Charles was there. That was the early years of JMU. It's not like it is now. And I think when Charles got to San Francisco and they were winning, constantly winning, that he owned that. You know, that's a guy who he'd be pissed off if he lost a game of spades. Uh, you know, a, a game of pool. Everything was, you know, life and death, winning and losing. And so this is what Emmett and... Michael Irvin said about how Jimmy Johnson was when you lost. You get the one time, we, we did lose to Washington. There was a little noise on the plane. Poor Jimmy went off. He came back there. He had just got done watching the live feed. Call it no name, right. but, but man. But everybody. Everybody is over. He, shut up and shut up. Say another word, I'm going to cut you before the plane lands. <laughs> <laughs> we sit dude, back there like this. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude, Damn. Dude, dude, <laughs> dude. <laughs> what y'all going to do now? We talking like You either whoop these jokers or we going to deal with that joker. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was always easy and, just whoop their ass. And, 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 get on that yeah, plane and exactly, get us some to eat. Exactly. You know it's, it's one of those things where you wear to go outside and whoop somebody behind and then come back to the house and say, Mama, we did what we needed to do. Can we get something to eat Can we get something to eat now? <laughs> but it was serious. Yeah. And that's the problem, honestly. If you don't hate losing to that degree, 
There and sometimes you, go. you gotta help instill that in people. In I, people. I keep talking about it. I, I, Dallas Cowboys have enough skill. It's about the will. I've never. There you go. They got enough skill. It's about the will and the mental toughness. Now I have a hope. I have a hope because now that Jimmy Johnson is no longer persona non grata. I think I said that right. Checking my wife. Now that he is part of the fold again, we know that the guys like Charles Haley and the playmaker, they come around and to work with them. Charles gets down on the field and practices with the guys and stuff and shows them technique. You see him with Micah Parsons and things. When you saw Jimmy Johnson at halftime, of that playoff game, I was ready to run through a brick wall. I Literally, if, I, if Jimmy Johnson was saying that to me, I would have been ready to run through a brick wall for him. And what I hope is that Jerry Jones welcomes Jimmy Johnson there to be a mentor to Mike McCarthy and to speak to these players to help them motivate them, to help them understand what they did to become the team that they were. Clearly, they ain't got that desire. They ain't got that, that, that will. They don't have that passion. And that's what's missing. I think we as fans have more passion. It bothers us that when we lose, when we lose, we, shh, man, we're ready to go to war. I don't know that it bothers these guys the same way. We'll definitely be talking about this more in a few hours where we have our 5 o'clock live stream. I hope you guys join us as we still try and figure this crap out. I'm Mark Holmes, and I appreciate you guys. Peace.